Hi, this is Psychic Kenny Kingston, and you're listening to Love Line with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Drew, I can't hear my... Oh, god damn it. Damn headphones. Oh, Christ. Drew plops down in his chair. He lifts the console up with the arm, and now I only got half a headphone. Phone number for Loveline, 1-800-LFE-191, fax number 310-854. Oh, sorry, Charles, for using the uh, CD-ROM to try to fix that console. It's meant for multi-purpose function. <laughs> Those are brand new headphones. I know. They I shouldn't not the No, console. no. Hey, Drew, Drew whacked the console. Uh, Drew, uh, why don't you sit down again and see if you can whack the console again. All right. I gave the phone number. Uh, the name of the show is Love Line. I'm ter terribly distracted now. Charles Fleischer is our guest. Uh, you know him from his uh, work, uh, oh, way back on Welcome Back, Connor, but uh, Roger Rabbit and um, uh, stand-up gigs. Uh, all, uh, do you still do a lot of stand-up? Every weekend, just about, if I'm in town. Oh, really? Yeah, this weekend I'll be at uh, Laugh Factory Friday and Saturday and Improv Friday. Do you, uh, which, uh, wait a minute. There's only one, Melrose. There's not one in Irvine any, anymore? Was there an Improv there in Irvine? Yep. somewhere out in the hinterlands, but I just worked the one on Melrose oh, and right. the Laugh Factory up on Sunset. Old school guy. And Charles, you've been around a long time. Uh, you could probably just go walk up on stage at just about any uh, comedy club here in town on any night of the week and uh, work out 15 minutes of new material, could you not? I believe most of them have a pretty set schedule that everyone seems to adhere to. Oh, I, really? I think so. Well, yeah. it, it seemed to me that uh, back in the day, guys used to drop in a lot and uh, Occasionally, step up uh, there. I think a Seinfeld would be uh, more suited for that kind of drop-in situation, or a really a mega-talent science fiction individual. Right, well... Uh, in, in, my, in the Loveline book, you, you're going down as a mega talent. I'm going insane with my uh, headphones now. Engineer know. Mike, you don't think it's the headphones, do you? All right. Well, chalk another one up to Drew and his uh, white ass. Um, we're going back to the phones. Emma? Yeah? You're 23. Yeah. Oh, this is, uh, this mono's driving me nuts. And, uh, let's see, uh, how do you get through boyfriend's head? Okay. You're a virgin. Yes. And your boyfriend wrestles with you uh, during intimate moments. Yes. And yet you sound kind of angry. Are you angry? Yeah, it makes me mad. It's, I, I don't like it. It's good. Yeah, but were you angry before the wrestling? No. You don't, you don't, uh, how do you like your dad? He's great. Yeah? Yeah. Get along fine? Uh-huh. And why are you a virgin at 23? I don't know. I've just never been involved with someone. Mm. Do you love this guy that you're with? Yeah. That's interesting. Why do you think you've never been involved with anybody? I don't know. They always end up to be someone that I kind of like as a friend. Mm-hmm. So there's isn't intimacy it, issues here. But isn't that the best person to be involved with is a person that is your friend? That's the best place to start a relationship is through friendship, and then lovers are the best friends. That's what we've done. I was friends with him for three years. Mm, but the other guys you described you were talking about. Well, right, but... Mm. I didn't like them like that. I don't know. All right. Wait a minute. My headphones are now sort of working. Oh, wait a minute. There we go. All right. So you've been with this guy for three years? Yeah. But you haven't had sex? No. Are, are, is this a religious thing? No. We were, like, best friends. And this is, like, the whole dating thing is relatively new. Mm. So when did you start dating? Over a month ago. This is a this is a personality style you're not used to dealing with. We don't have a lot out here on this coast. Oh, really? It's the East Coast thing. Yeah, mid mid. This person is afraid of intimacy. This is this is a certain personality style. Uh, combative, defensive, detached, detached. Yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. uh, Emma, do you have a cat? No. No. You do don't you don't remember like your too. dreams, Emma? Sometimes. Do you have a, a recurring dream? A theme that often comes to you at night? Yeah, but I mean, I know why. What, what is what the is it? Uh, when I was little, um, I used to, like, there was, like, two weeks when I was, like, nine years old where I had a dream that there was a guy in my room. And he would, like, pull the covers off me and everything. And, you know, I'd, like, cry and my parents would come in. And, um, like, two weeks after that happened... I, like, went down our basement, and a guy jumped out of her crawl space, and my dog attacked him, and he had been, like, in our house for, like, two weeks. Is this the, the guy dream, was actually... real? Yeah. 
Oh. And the guy was actually coming up and it's spooky. And then well, I'm giving I'm giving Charles the pot on that one. The three bucks was out yeah, yeah. from the last gambling. Wait a minute. Fest, you mean he would actually stand over your bed and pull your covers off and and then? Are you sure this actually happened? Do you I watch a lot of Wes so, Craven movies? My parents would come in and I would be like really upset and I'd say there was someone in my room and they thought I was just having a dream. And they're like, no, just turn on the light. If it happens again, you'll see that it isn't there. And so I heard something in the basement and I went down there and opened up. We had like a small door. And this man jumped out, and luckily, like, my dog attacked him. And my dad ran downstairs, and I had a knife and stabbed him. Oh, my God. The, hold on. I'm yeah. giving, let me give Charles a $3. The guy, I think this the, is the, the this guy is stabbed your father? Yeah, in the arm. Did, I, uh, hold on a second. Did everyone just get, a, like, a like a chill yes, up their me, spine? Yeah, me too. Yeah. Sure, you better hurry home tonight. <laughs> oh, geez, I'm going to freak out. That's it. I'm masturbating with one eye open tonight. Really? Yeah. Don't you always do that? I know, usually keep them both shut for, you know, protection. All right, so some pretty pretty heavy, spooky trauma at, at, at a delicate age, mm -hmm. you know. Oh, wait, I, I, I want to get just a little bit deeper into this. So you're about nine, you were nine years old? Yeah. And uh, you, you don't have any brothers or sisters? Yeah, I do. Oh, you do? Yeah. And did they speak of this? My brother was, like, six or seven months old, so. Okay. okay. I, I didn't even, the only reason that they figured out that he was in there is because my parents had told him, the police when they showed up, that I had been, that I told them this is the same guy that was in my dream, and he had like, um, he had like my, my underwear and everything like in this crawl space, Ugh. and that they found like cigarettes and uh, condoms and everything like in my bedroom, like in the closet and everything. Do you, now, do you live, was this a huge house? Yeah, they don't know how he got past our security system. Whoa. Your security system? <laughs> oh, well, you, so your folks uh, are well off? Yeah. What kind of dog was this? A Rottweiler. Wow. You yeah. see why people in big houses always have dogs? My God, so the dog saved your life, right? Uh, yeah, I love that dog. Is, is it possible this guy was abusing you sexually and you weren't uh, really waking up or responding to it until later? You know, until, you know what I mean? That he got something, he did something to you and you'd, then you'd shriek and then he'd run out? I don't think so. All right. So, uh, by the way, this is the plan I'm going to use to keep my daughter a virgin until she's well into her 20s. And, and let me let me go back to a question I asked you very recently. Wait a minute. I don't want to get off but, the but past wait a minute. here. But I asked her, had a male ever overpowered you physically? Oh, you did. Uh, give me one of those dollars Dr. back. Drew's right. Give me, give me a dollar and back. So I Drew. wonder if, you know, that this is sort of, re, in some at least symbolic sense, it's recreating that whole violation. I mean, of course she'd be very sensitive. Does this guy know about this history, your, your boyfriend? Yeah. I mean... It's not that, like, when he pins me, it's a problem. I mean, I do have problems if I hear things at night, because I do go and check it out. All of us. <laughs> All right, this is officially the spookiest call we've ever gotten on Loveline. Wow. Okay, but listen, Emma. This is being overpowered. Um, having a, you know, crazed um, smoker, a pervert, living in your basement and, and attacking you at age nine when you went down there is, um, I, I'll, I'll just go ahead and toss that into the overpowered by a male category. And so the dog started barking, and you started screaming? Oh, no, my dog attacked him. Yeah, okay, the dog attacked Very difficult to talk to. You know, okay. okay, the dog attacked him, you started screaming, and your dad ran down? Well, this guy jumps out. I didn't even know he had a knife at the time. And I, my dog just attacked him. And so I ran upstairs, and my dad can, like knew something was seriously wrong, so he ran down there, and there's this man with a knife, and he tackle him down with the help of the dog. And he stabbed your dad? Yeah, in the arm. And then what happened? Well, my mom ran downstairs, and we had people that worked at the house, so they all ran downstairs. And so they called the police, and they showed up. And what happened to the guy? Apparently, he had been in a mental institution for a really long time, and then he'd been out for a while. This is, this is all I really know. And at one point in time, he had they think that he had killed someone in his family when he was, like, really young. And so now he's, like, in a mental institution. He hasn't been released yet. Do the sling bite voice again. Mm -hmm. Did this person ever come back to you? Do you love this man? I think this fella loved you. Mm -hmm. What I want you to do is to recreate this with your boyfriend. And only this time, you be the fella in the basement. And you jump out and hit him on the head with a waffle bat. And do it a couple times and you'll feel better. Mm -hmm. Oh, Emma. All right, Emma, so you, you've been through uh, a, oh, I, listen, I need uh, more therapy now. I was going to say therapy. Just but hearing the story. Huh. 
Uh, so Emma, uh, obviously you don't want any guy uh, tackling you and overpowering attacking you. Attacking you in any way. Right? Have you ever told your boyfriend this? Yeah, he knows. Okay. Uh, the, the boyfriend, we're, we're, we're switching around our whole emphasis to blaming the boyfriend again. The boyfriend is suspect, and you, and you may be prone. I to... I don't know. I blame. Well, Emma's no no prize I either. But he may, she makes kind of seek out victimizers a little bit. And this guy can't. I can't be sensitive to how how difficult this must be for her. He goes on attacking her. Ugh. The creepy ending to this: the boyfriend's father was the guy in the basement. <laughs> <laughs> Emma, hang on the line, okay? Okay. All right. All right. We gotta bring her back on Halloween. Oh my Whoa. God. Man, that's the, the, Jungian, the, the part that was the creepiest to me was that she would see this figure standing yeah. at the uh, foot of her bed. Oof. Oh. Oh, in this big real. house. I'm picturing this like big uh, Victorian Man. yeah. Uh, yeah. style mansion. Thank God she had the Rottweiler. I'm going to get a dog tomorrow. Oh, you draw, <laughs> your, your dog, Drew, would have uh, just started dry humping her leg while this guy was yeah. uh, feeling her up. Yes. Oh, please. Oh, that is bizarre. Okay, listen. I want to give credit where credit is due here. Charles Fleischer, uh, the comedian, philanthropist, um, a sage, a scientist, a teacher, student, lover, um, uh, maker of voices. <laughs> Asked her about the dream, and this is what we got into. And, and uh, call her, stop with the denial all the time. Man, do we have to get stuff. We have to ring people like, 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 like uh, sponge mops to get stuff out of them. I had a feeling. It all right. in her voice. I'm going to change my underwear, and we'll be back. Hello, this is Loveline. Uh, true, true always has to start a conversation right as the mic seat up. Uh, Adam Carolla, Dr. Drew, Charles Fleischer, comedian, um, voice matician, and uh, he has uh, many other skills, and we'll explore those in 10 seconds. All right. Oh, really? Yeah, bless wanna... Charles. Anyway, uh, name of the show, Love Line. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Fax number 310 854 4455. Charles Fleischer is our guest tonight. Charles, uh, besides uh, being the voice of Roger Rabbit, doing uh, many, many, many. Oh, jeez. Uh, you've been on all the shows. So uh, you were on Carson when Carson was on, weren't you? Yes. When Carson was on. Actually, yeah. I, did, I did the Molids on uh, The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. And uh, in the break, we talked about the Heisenberg Uncertainty Principle. And I was conjuring in my mind, what would happen if I stabbed his hand with a pencil? But I didn't do it. But you know how you get thoughts in your head and you just process them out? Right. Well, that's right. what I was thinking. He was talking to me. I was just thinking, look at those liver spots. If I just stabbed his hand a couple of times, it would get, get me pressed. But I chose not. So Bobcat Very thought good. to himself, what if I lit the chair on fire while I was there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he actually did. Yeah, it's a form of um, physical Tourette's. Yeah, it's a Tourette's. Although Bob uh, did not take his lithium. Uh, Roger Rabbit and uh, Roger Rabbit uh, 2, the prequel which uh, has gotten the green light, and uh, that will be coming out. Any idea when that might... Uh, well, when's it even going to production? I, I would guess, say before but... the millennium. It's, okay. a, it's out of my control. Is that 200 years? Yeah, whatever. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right, also, also uh, Charles has himself out a... Uh, uh, what would he call this? Virtual a, reality. Yeah, virtual reality. It's a uh, science... Uh, um, what the hell do they call this? Uh, City Rock. Thank you. And uh, you plug it in. And is, is it to teach younger people about science and math and that sort of thing? Anyone that wants to know. But it's designed specifically for children, animated characters and little songs and funny little shticks. And uh, he also has himself a web page, monkeydog.com. And this and is the world a... premiere tonight. I've come on oh, your is. show to announce the world premiere. Drew, did you see that uh, yes. web page in you there? yanked me off it, in fact. How was it? Excellent. Yeah. What did you see on thing is incredible. All right, so... And I just also want to mention uh, the guys that helped me build the page, Burning Cow. Mm Mm-hmm. Really, these guys are uh, webmasters. Really? Yeah, they're happening. Uh, uh, They've done any other notable web pages? This I couldn't tell you, but they have some in the past. But this, I think, will allow them to springboard into uh, being major players on the net. Yeah, Charles is like a launching pad for greatness. He really is. I'm going to quit the show tonight and move on to (laughs) do... I thought you might... 
One of the voices. Right? Yeah, could you wagon. give me a gig doing some voiceover work, for Christ's sake? Yeah, I think you have a natural ability. The way you just move in and out of your own voice is it's, it's freaky. Yeah, I'm very rangy. I do when me. I close my eyes, it's like I see you, and then I see another you. I, I, here's, here's my range. I do me tired, and I do me sleepy. It's good, though. There's a very subtle change. There's a lilting quality to your voice. Oh. Nicholson -esque. <laughs> you Nicholson-esque. You want to give a uh, quick shout-out to your peeps, uh, Charles? I noticed... Yeah, uh, i got to say hello to uh, Rachel and Jessica. Those daughters. are your daughters. And I also need to plug a really cool band called Phantom Planet, which uh, they're really cool. They're boyfriends. Oh, really? Boyf you're letting your daughters uh, date rock and rollers? No, no, no. They're just, they're friends. They're cool kids. Okay. They're, uh, they're really talented. They have, they're going to have an album coming out on Geffen. I'll tell you who they should uh, date, the, uh, the uh, Wombats. Uh, who do we have in Lesson? The Aquabats. Oh, These are a good bunch of, it's a good Mormon rock band. <laughs> good Mormon ska Trent band. Trent Reznor. I like Trent Reznor a lot. Oh, boy. Oh, that's a, that's a good message Your for the kids. kids. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, Trent, he's a, he's a puzzle. for one and the, and Trent for the other. Alana. Hi. Hey, you're 19. Yep. I just want to say, Adam, I think you're just adorable, and I think you're funny. Thank you. And uh, I had a question for Dr. Drew, actually. Mm -hmm. I was with this guy for, like, two months, and um, we have had sex, like, four times, like, in the beginning, like, in, like, the first month or two. And he, he had always done speed, except for this one night where he did speed where whatever I tried doing did not help him keep an erection. I just wanted to know why. Well, the speed is certainly working against him, but... Uh -huh. But he didn't do speed that night. I understand, no, but many men right. will experience okay. this anyway. Uh, right. And, and uh, this is a very common thing, particularly early on in a relationship. If a guy is anxious, mm -hmm. and certainly speed is not known for mellowing people out. <laughs> um, it doesn't help with anxiety? Uh, no. So let's say uh, you think the cops are surrounding your house. You do not take speed? <laughs> That's right. Or if you take speed, uh, yeah, you may begin thinking uh, that your family is uh, planting bombs at your house and things Actually, will not work properly. Dr. Drew, can I ask you one more question real yeah, quick? Yeah. I wanted to know about, see, my best friend, he's HIV positive, mm. and I was wondering, because I'm thinking about sleeping with him, what are, like, the consequences? I mean... What do you think? Well, I know. <laughs> what are the consequences? Well, I think they're obvious, but I mean... Let, let's like, just say he... he uh, Let's just say he had some other form of um, uh, transmittable disease. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm talking, okay. Let's say he had whooping cough. <laughs> uh, what would the consequences be potentially of sleeping with a guy with whooping cough, Drew? I'm guessing he would have whooping cough. Yeah. But I'm just wondering, okay, if he were to use condoms and stuff, I mean, would it, okay, there would still be a risk there, but I mean, should I not do it because he is HIV positive? Well, what about the guy you're currently seeing? Oh, that relationship has been over for a while. <laughs> Oh, it is? Yeah. Why are you... Was why? the penis a deal breaker? Yes. That was it for you? There's that was it. About this, this woman There's some gambling here. Path. Yeah. Speed addicts. Well, it's... it's uh, yeah. HIV positive. Have well, you... Are you, you know what? This girl will marry a guy in prison. <coughs> yeah. yeah. She'll end up marrying it's, a guy in prison. Are you attracted to the guys in prison and stuff? Hell no. It, you're, this is like severe codependency. It's, it's a need to go no. in and fix people and... Uh, Actually... You know, I mean, he couldn't really help. My friend couldn't help the fact that he got HIV. He was raped when he was younger. So, Listen, I mean, he I, got it that way through the guy who I raped I understand, him. but your, your need, you, what you sort of clue into with people is that level of pain mm -hmm. that they're experiencing that makes them need somebody or the fact that you perceive they need somebody to fix them and support them so you feel good about yourself. Now, I'm certainly not going to tell you, don't, you don't have a relationship with this guy because you have HIV. These are your decisions, but they're your decisions. You need to decide, and you need to deal with it on reality's terms. Yes, you can get HIV from sleeping with this guy. Absolutely, of course. Yeah. But if this is somebody you love and it's important for you to be close with them, okay, that's no, fine. I, mean, I, I can be close but, with him but without But there is a real pattern here of you involving yourself in an intimate way with guys who are um, in, in troubled in some way. Either they need help or support or they're addicts. Damage. Well, you're you're you're, goods, you're yeah. starting a uh, a relationship that you may have difficulty finishing. Yeah, that's what, uh, and that's what a lot of people do. But I mean, this is co look. Just take your speed addict uh, relationship, and that's codependency. That's what that's okay. what defines it. What happened to him that he got he got raped? Um, it was just like a, a not like a freak accident or nothing. But okay, his his mom's like best friend or whatever. They got drunk one night and. It happened. How old was he? That's Alana, so yeah, Alana, please. On, on rea on. Let's deal in reality here. Got drunk. Okay. Yeah. It just, uh, it just happened. It, just say well, had a couple drinks. It just happened. Do we toilet no, paper the neighborhood or commit bestiality with the kid? Let's <clears throat> flip a coin. Come on. 
<laughs> a lot of you are so detached. I mean, she many. Well, not only. Wait, well, it is it is denial night here on Loveline. Yes, Boy, is. we have a strong theme going. It's really turned into uh, Jenny Jones with the theme here. Alana, you told us five seconds ago it wasn't his fault he was raped uh, when he was younger. Yeah. Well, this turns into him getting drunk and having um, gay relations with uh, one of his mom's friends. No, but I mean, when, when you say no, it means no. I don't care whether or not you're drunk or not. Well, what, or what happened? How old was he? At the time, he was 13. Okay, well, then he was raped. Then we're back He was on sexually that. abused. Right. And he was in a situation where predators were coming into his house. So he already was in a family where something was wrong. Yeah. Yeah, his mom brought home a guy who got her 13-year-old son loaded and had mm. sex with him. Oh, mamas. Uh, I, I, I give this warning out all the time. Uh, a lot of screwed-up women having kids getting divorced and then bringing a stepdad or friend or somebody in to the house and it is like bringing the wolves in to guard the chicken chicken coop it is uh, all the stories we hear well, and, 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 I, and I, by the way on, on cases like this i blame mama oh yeah because there is a hiv infected uh, alcoholic pedophile on every corner <laughs> uh, every other corner well, what's in, in this country what, what happened to you what happened to me where yeah well yeah well, you tell us what happened to you? Well, basic you know. dysfunctional family, I guess. Dad drunk a lot. Um, my mom was stupid. Mm -hmm. She stayed with him. Didn't right. want to listen to you. How badly I... did your dad abuse you in some way? No. No? Nah. I mean, he didn't. No, I really wasn't around him that often anyway, because I was, like, shipped back and forth to my grandmother, so. Right. Um... He wasn't abusive to me, but he was abusive to my, towards my mother. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you saw how guys can be. Oh, yeah. Okay. And that's, that's one of the, the causes of codependency is being raised in an alcoholic family. This is a theme tonight, by the way. When, when this is uh, my hypothesis, but uh, since I host the show, I'm, it must be right. <laughs> um, when women grow up in a family where they have a horribly abusive dad, all the relationships, they either they are become lesbian or they get into unrealistic relationships with men where they can never really finish. I mean, going out with the, the speed addict, going out with the guy who's HIV positive, going out with the abuser, going out with guys who are in the military and nowhere near, uh, falling in love with uh, guys who are incarcerated for the next 15 years. It's always about a relationship that doesn't have, that, that can't really end up in marriage, kids. Mm -hmm. In a house. Complete detachment. Right. For the reality of attachment. Boy, we have uh, just a ton of that going. I wonder, what, I wonder how that, you, you know, uh, I don't want to get too heavy, but as long as we have Charles Fleischer, a uh, comedian, scientist, in here tonight, we can. Um, I don't know how the universe works or how the great magnet works that you get calls or that you have nights that turn into themes here. It doesn't happen that often on this show. We usually just, you know, we leave the lines open and whatever calls come, uh, come and we handle them in that order. But tonight, and it's happened on other occasions, there just seems to be a very strong through line running through the show, which is a lot of women between the ages of 18 and 25 who are having difficulty... Uh, steeped in denial. Steeped in denial, uh, combative, difficult, and having uh, a lot of difficulty having intimate relations as adults. I blame Charles, by the way. <laughs> Dee Dee, you're 33. Yeah, hi. Hey, you want to talk to Charles? I, well, I just wanted to say hi to Charles. Uh, Charles, this is Dee Dee Stevens from NEC. Oh, hi, Dee Dee. Hi. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Great. And you see, that's a computer company. I, uh -huh. I, sure. I, neck. Yep. I'm a uh, necrophilac. I love those things. <laughs> Do you? All right. That's like Dee Dee, you're point. not dysfunctional, are you? Uh, <laughs> terribly. <laughs> what, how do you know Charles, Dee Dee? Uh, Charles hosted a... We did an 18-city road show throughout the United States, and Charles hosted the um, West Coast cities for the road show. He played a, kind of like a David Letterman type character. Is it one of those road shows where the guys hang an anvil from their testicles? <laughs> uh, no. No. Oh, well, that's why I didn't catch it. That was later in the hotel. It was, was in the lobby. No, I just wanted to say hello. I, I'm getting ready to go to bed, and I turn on my radio, and I heard you, and I had to say hi. Well, thank you for calling. And could you send me an extra battery for the laptop and a carrying case? <laughs> I'll see what I can do, Charles. Thank you very much. Okay. All right, Dee Dee. Take care. Bye.
Yeah. Well, it's just a break to have someone call in that isn't dysfunctional, yes. just to show that there's, wow, there are women out there that are capable of uh, normal relationships. Um, another five minutes, we would have found out that uh, she had been sexually abused by an uncle. And I'm sure like Drew, could, freak in her basement. Drew could get uh, sexual abuse out of a newborn right at the hospital, could actually get the newborn to admit uh, they were sexually abused in the womb. Nisha. Hello. You're 15. Hi. Hey. How are you guys tonight? Good. Um, okay. Here's the deal. Um, me and my boyfriend have been having sex. Mm -mm. And the problem is that he doesn't like using condoms. And <laughs> he wants me to get on the pill. Hello? Yep. Mm. But, um, I don't... So my friend told me that it's bad for me. Nope. It's not, right? Mm, it's not bad for you. And also, do I need to get parental consent? Nope. And also, if I got an abortion, because if if I get knocked up, then my boyfriend is in big, big trouble. If you have unprotected intercourse, get yourself to a Planned Parenthood or a family planning center or an emergency room or any doctor and get the morning after pill. Okay. You, there is ov overall or low overall can be taken within 48 to 72 hours of an unprotected intercourse okay. and substantially reduce the risk of pregnancy. Why I, is this not on the nightstand of every well, teen in America? You know what? We, I, we first reasoned that perhaps it was, I, I, I thought it sort of induced an abortion. It prevented the embryo from implanting. And that was sort of a prevailing... The egg from implanting? Or the, uh, it's now an embryo. Oh, it is. Yeah. And uh, it turns out it, that's not its primary effect. They've studied this very carefully recently because there were, were some discussion about should this thing be... Dis well, know, thanks to the uh, innovation of the vagina cam, there's information well, now that it, didn't exist. It uh, turns out that uh, it's, it interrupts ovulation, and that's really its primary effect. So there is never conception anyway. Is this the RU486? Nope. You're talking about this nope. Is something different. Nope, something different. Just plain old birth control pill, overall, overall, you take them double or quadruple doses for a few days, and that's it. All right, let me explain what this is. The RU486, I, I hear, induces an abortion. That's an abortive phase, yeah. Um, some... Uh, I guess and can be used some weeks or even months into oh, a pregnancy. Yeah. Oh, sure. Right. This is something you take uh, just a day or two or three at the most after, let's say you're having responsible sex uh, one, breaks. one evening. Mm -hmm. Hello? <laughs> Just quiet down over there. And the condom breaks. Mm. Now, you, you may have gotten pregnant from this. Mm. So you, you, you run over, you get these pills, and you take it. And that way, maybe you were impregnated, maybe you weren't, but this uh, wipes out. This does not leave it up to, to God and chance. Okay. But make sure that your boyfriend is not with anyone else having unprotected sex. Oh, no, no. Not and, that, and you can get the pill for, the, for use in the manner which is designed to be used, which is daily. And, and also... If I needed to get an abortion, do I have to have my parents come with me? Nope. Are you pregnant depends now? Depends on the state, but well, no. No, no, I'm not. Mm -hmm. It depends I'm on the... All right, well, don't, you know, why don't you ask us questions about uh, caskets? And, uh, you know, I mean, just be responsible and you won't get pregnant. What about the diaphragm, doctor, if she's worried about chemicals in her body? Is that not a... Diaphragm it? with a condom is really the f most, f as effective as the pill. With but a diaphragm... And a coat? Yeah. Diaphragm by itself is pretty... It's like 85, 88. Yeah, because my boyfriend, he he really doesn't like it and i mean it's i don't the pill it turns out actually has health advantages for people your age if okay. you're not smoking if you don't have migraine headaches if you have no reason not to be on it there are some substantial health advantages not the least of which is avoiding pregnancy which it has its own dangers people don't understand that women 20 percent of women died in childbirth uh, until the turn of the century at least 20 percent. it also increases breast size doesn't it doctor uh, according to adam Charles is right, you know. Okay. And that is definitely one of the advantages, is yeah. that what you're saying? Yeah, and, uh, uh, mm, and, uh... <laughs> I like them big, doctor. Mm. Uh, it, it, mm. explain why you like the large breasts. I think they're nice to play with. Mm. They look pretty, too. Baby like them, women like them. Mm. All people like them. Look at me, Schnaven, I can... Anyway, the pe women, the, it, it, it decreases risk of pelvic inflammatory disease. People that get PID, the hospitalizations are shorter, the, and the, the risks of pregnancy are substantially greater than the potential risk of the pill itself. Well, Wendy. Yes. You're 27. Uh-huh. Um, my problem is, uh, this is for Dr. Drew, mm -hmm. um, when me and my husband... Please, uh, let's, uh, let's stop... Um um, specifying. Specifying. Yeah. The, it only makes me want to jump in more. Okay. You're all capable of helping. <laughs> um, um, when me and my husband have sex and I have um, multiple orgasms, I get sick like I want to throw up. Mm -hmm. I would like to know why. Only on the multi-orgasm? Um, all the time. 
Oh, that one orgasm will make you want to vomit? Right. I think I have. Do you have a water bed? No. Mm. That's a nice call. Is Does there, your uh, husband have a lot of hair on his back? <laughs> Is there any pain during intercourse? No. It's during intercourse, yeah. Any pain? No. Do you actually vomit? Um, I get to the point where I do. Because mm -hmm. I'll keep one of those airplane bags right by the uh, headboard there. <laughs> do you move a lot? Does your head move around quite a bit? My you, head, no. Your body at all? My body does, yeah. Mm, could that be it, Doc? Moving like motion sickness? Mm -hmm. If he's really rocking the boat? It's mo it's like um, when I'm mostly when we do it um, when I'm laying on my back and he's, you know, pressing against my stomach. And then does that hurt? He, when he's on top of you, like right, and it's the, you feel it's the pressure. Do you have a lot of heartburn, that sort of thing? No. Is this do after have, meals? Do you have any medical problems? No. Are you on any medications? No. Hmm. After meals or before meals or? Anytime we have sex. Really? But you, in a certain position. That was my question. It, it's mostly you know the missionary position, and sometimes it's you know the doggy position. Well, doggies is um, is a better position to vomit from. <laughs> I mean, I, I can I can tell you that <laughs> now, you'll, you'll, you'll end up like uh, Mama Cass if uh, you vomit in the missionary position. I don't know. It's a very strange thing. I mean, there's a, all this autonomic. Do you have headaches with it? No, I don't. Do you ever think about women when you're having sex? No. Would you find it offensive if he was doing you in the dog position and walked you over to the toilet? If you didn't have orgasm, would you vomit or get sick? Um, I have them all the time. What about when you masturbate? Do you get nauseous then? Yeah. You do. Wait, what do you mean you have them all the time? Uh, hold on. Arlene Francis is going to turn over all the cards. <laughs> <laughs> I think she's a Dramamine freak withdrawing. <laughs> what, what do you mean you have them all the time? Okay, like, um, some, it's, sometimes it's like it's not when we do it all the time, you know, I get sick no matter what. Uh, like, I know he, he's doing it inside of me and I get sick too. Uh, oh, so. all right. Wait a minute. I uh, Hold on a second, Wendy. I... I smell potential gambling, but at least uh, there's more here. Mm. I'm guessing she went up to the attic and was attacked <laughs> by the uh, uh, Billy Joe Bob Thornton. By the Ipecac, the Ipecac <laughs> bandit. That's right. <laughs> there's definitely something. It's, there, uh... There's something brewing. There's something going on here, and we will get to the bottom of it when we come back. <laughs> Hi, this is John Tesh, and you are listening to Love Line with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. It is Love Line. I is, and uh, so is Drew, and uh, Charles Fleischer is here tonight. Charles is a uh, very accomplished comedian who it seems like in uh, recent years has been branching out into uh, other endeavors. All uh, extensions of my comedic soul, but definitely into uh, multimedia computers and science. Which I have a. Profile. Did you excel in school? No, I, I decelerated. <laughs> really, I came to a, a grinding halt myself. I, uh, school was the mis the mystery to me. It, but I didn't do well in school because I was a bona fide moron. You probably didn't do well in school because you had this uh, advanced, uh, disturbed mind <laughs> that led you to all these bizarre voices and manifestations it just and things. It seemed like a joke to me. It did. Yeah, it's like, and the whole idea for me was to try and okay, how can I get through this without playing their game and playing my game? Right. So you're sort of uh, combative. Uh, that or lazy. Did you start in, when did you uh, realize that you had the gift of dialect? When I was a little kid, I used to uh, do shows for aliens when I was taking a shower. I suspected there were aliens that might be watching the Earth, so I would do shows for them hoping that they may watch me and then bring me gifts. Really? I'm still waiting. All I ever did when I uh, suspected there were aliens in the shower is uh, put on a sombrero so they couldn't see me masturbate. We are coming soon to bring you lots of things, but Anderson Sanders keep doing the shtick. Charlie, boom, boom, and you that. Do not fear me. I have come to save you all. It is not your time, Zandra. Look who you did. No. Drew, knock it off. I'm trying to do a show. Dude, Charles, that was an excellent voice. I think, Charles, the the radio. I think Charles is Space Ghost. No. Who is Space Ghost, by the way? I have no idea. Uh, Rudyard Kipling? <laughs> That's the first thing that comes to mind. You, you get a lot of voiceover work, right? Not really. Really? I really don't do... I'm pretty selective. Oh, you don't You don't want to do a lot of voiceover work? If they make me offers, but I have gone in for things, and they, I never get voice things. Really? Well, I, you did Roger Rabbit. Have you, well, have you done any other Disney stuff? 
I don't believe I have done. I've done a few little things. I did um, uh, Spielberg uh, dinosaur thing. I was one of the dinosaurs in that. But I don't do too much of that. Oh, and that animated uh, uh, yeah. Fightful goes We're back, back uh, to the future yeah. or Grand something. Four time. That's one of those. Which one? Oh, true. I was My the, kids watch this stuff all the time. And this is a guy who hasn't seen The Shining, by the way, but he's seen The Land Before Time 145 times. All four Red series. Rum. Red Rum. I couldn't tell you. It was a green one. Uh, yeah. Can you do a little uh, dinosaur voice so Drew can get uh, some wood before uh, he goes home? Yeah, it was kind of, uh, kind of Kermit-like, I believe. Okay, all right. Oh, yeah, hip kind of yep. nerdy, nerdy Kermit. Yep. A nerdy Kermit uh, arena. Well, should we wake Let's the kids up and kids. freak, freak oh, them yeah. out? I'll tell you, why don't we do this tonight? Why doesn't Charles go home with you and stand at the foot of the kids' beds uh, tonight and put on, um, he can put on a little, uh, put on a little of the voice, a little of the dinosaur voice, and then he can come over to my place about 4 a.m. and do the, uh, no, I want him in the basement. Billy we Bob already Thornton. already agreed to that, I thought. <laughs> you mean there's, there's a possibility that won't happen? <laughs> no, it's going to happen, Charles. I'm hoping. Wendy. Yeah. No, no, Wendy, we were oh. talking to about getting sick after sex. Right. And we were trying That's to right. decide if there was something physical going on or something psychological. And uh, what the question that Charles asked, but I wasn't sure if we got a satisfactory answer, was do you get sick after you have an orgasm from masturbation? Yes. Do you, you have, do. do you have a sense that this is some sort of biological reaction just to the orgasm? Or is no. there some kind of psychological thing that you're disturbed about all this? No, I'm not, I don't think it's psychological. You don't. Mm. No. Never had any bad experience with an orgasm or a man or anything like that. Um, when I was little, I was abused. Oh boy! What the a theme goes on. What uh, what form of abuse? Um, um. Sexual. Yeah. Okay. Well, that would be you why you have. I was five and eight and ten. Okay. This would be why you'd have an intense reaction to your sexual experience. This is. Um, you know what our love... Here's what our Loveline listeners are like. Now, don't go anywhere, Wendy. I just want to talk about you behind your back. It is if a patient came in to see Dr. Drew and had a rusty sprinkler key uh, sticking out of their abdomen, but they stood in front of a, a, um, a curtain. They stood in front of a... Um, I'm trying to think of the name of the thing used in the uh, doctor's office, the uh, divider there. Yeah. What is that called? All right, now I'm going insane. Drew, you absolutely do. You only contribute your own inane uh, voice to this show. Yes. What the hell is that thing called? In Divider. The... Okay. Partition. Partition. Thank you. you. Oh, thank God Charles is here tonight. So, they stand on the other side of the partition, and you can't see them. And they say, I have excruciating abdominal pain, Guess what doctor. I have. No, they just say I have excruciating do abdominal pain. And you say, are you on any medication? No. Meanwhile, the rusty sprinkler key is sticking out. It's right. now actually poked through the backside, and it right. just missed their spine, thankfully. <sighs> Are you lactose intolerant? Uh, no. Do you uh, want a hair coloring? No. Are you shoes too no. tight? Vomiting? No. No. Uh, uh, I've been fine up until uh, this afternoon. Is mm. there a metal object that's impregnating your duodendum? Uh, what kind of object? A oh, rusty? Uh, it could be. Is no, it, it isn't. Is on the end? Yeah. You have a sprinkler key in your stomach. Yes. No, no. Then they would go, yeah, but I, I, I'm fine with that. I'm, but that's, that's, not, not, that's it. not it. I'm telling you. That's it's not, not it. Because I've had that all my yes, life. And my brother has that. No, and I, I like that. There you go. It's fun. <laughs> and uh, boy, was my mom pissed when uh, we came out. All right, so uh, Wendy over here, who gets sick, uh, is getting sick because she's having a reaction to all this, um, uh, obviously, being sexually uh, molested as a uh, young and Wendy. Yeah. How, uh, how difficult is this one to figure out? Well, it just it just started happening. Me and my husband have been together for 12 years. All right, but you, we were hunting and pecking and scratching and sniffing we're working at every inane angle we could and it's so obvious you didn't you didn't come forward with the sexual abuse stuff i had to get that out of you there would be one possible other reality uh you're familiar with synthesia where different senses are cross-wired people hear a phone ring and they taste chocolate you know about this? That, mm. There's something called synthesia. Uh, sometimes composers have it. They hear an F sharp and they see yellow. Mm. So perhaps there's some cross wiring so that when this pleasure manifests, it, it creates a nausea. But that's very, very, a very small possibility. Well, I mean, we are conditioned creatures and we condition uh, reactions to certain stimuli. And this may be something that's uh, who, who molested you, Wendy? Um, my grandfather, my uncle, and a neighbor. Okay. You guys have kids? That's the hat trick of molestation. Do I have kids? Yeah. Two. 
Uh, how old is your youngest kid? I have a 10-year-old and a 5-year-old. Okay. Has uh, anything happened to them recently that might have sort of triggered memories of all this? No. Anything about their age? or When did this all start happening to you at age of 10 or something? Or? Um, as this started happening, you know, about three months ago. I just moved, too. Mm. Okay, so grandfather, neighbor, and uncle? Right. All right. Mm -hmm. and did you move back to the neighborhood where you were born or in the... Right? No, I just moved from one state to another state. Okay. Maybe it's just all the anxiety about that. All right, Wendy, this is a, a no-brainer. It took, a, it took us a... Boy, I, I feel like uh, we're... Um, Part of the uh, FAA investigation squad, just uh, you know, thumbing, uh, just uh, rummaging through the wreckage, looking for any clues. All right, Wendy, this is a horrible situation. Obviously, it's related to this, and until you get help with uh, this tra tragedy of the past, uh, this is going to keep keep happening. Oh boy! All right, uh, new um, um, uh, addendum to the. Uh, to the uh, minutes of, uh, of last week's Love Line shows. If anybody has been sexually molested who calls this show and has a, has a question of, of a sexual nature, they must come forward with this immediately. Man, that took a while. I mean, this woman was sexually abused. I mean, picture that. It's sexually abused by grandfather, uncle, and neighbor. That's, uh, I'm, are people magnets for abuse? I mean, how does that no, work? No, uh, well, they're... they're there are some children that the abusers perceive as better targets, and they'll abuse that one. And once they've been victimized, then they make great victims. Mm -hmm. And victimizers know it somehow. They have some radar that picks it up, and I, I cannot figure out what it is they say. Alex? Yeah? You're on with uh, Charles Fleischer, comedian, scientist, philanthropist. Okay, Charles? Lover of men and yes. women. Yes. My friend, Jake, and my met you at CISA this summer. Oh, Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Jake Stern men and Maisha. Oh, it's CISA. That's um, a CalArts camp. Yeah. Um, where I actually had taught a comedy class. Yeah, they thought you were really, really sweet, and they wanted me to tell you hello. Oh, well, tell them hi and tell them to continue with their endeavors. Can you imagine Adam teaching a class of any type? <laughs> I think I could teach a comedy class. I'd, I'd love to see the itinerary. Uh, wood burning at noon, uh, potato sack race at 3, and uh, bizarre voices and scientific insights with comedian Charles Fleischer at 5 o'clock. Well, tell them hi, and you don't have any serious uh, mental no, or physical nothing problems. I have to ask, except for I have a question for Dr. Drew real quick. Yeah? Okay, um, it's kind of a third-person question, and I know you don't really take them. All right, real quick. Okay, my friend, he got his tongue pierced in June. Uh -huh. And it's been okay for the past two months, and then it started to form muscle around the piercing. Oh, my God. And then just in the past couple of weeks, the sides of his tongue and his throat have started to hurt and be really painful. Oh, boy. I know it's infected, but is there anything he can do to get anything not from the piercing place? Because that place won't look at him. Oh, that's a good policy. Yeah. He has to go to the doctor. Antibiotics. Yeah, he needs antibiotics. Anyway, my concern is that this may be, if it's, you know, <laughs> oh, there's a million possibilities here. I mean, there may be infection all through his jaw. could even be getting to the bone. Or this could be uh, potentially something called proud flesh which is where wounds sort of become chronically inflamed and they develop this abnormal soft tissue growth and they keep growing. Is that like a keloid? Kind of like a keloid, but it's bigger than that. And it's very bizarre looking and it's very, it's very raw tissue. So Seftin, 500 milligrams, two mm -hmm. times a day? That was my Keflex. Indian name, by the way, Keflex. Proud Flesh. Keflex. Yes. That's good. That's anaerobic as well. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> I'll tell you, this uh, Charles Fleischer... Um, I tell you, I, uh, I I take back everything I ever said about you, Charles. <laughs> Please you're, don't, because I love animosity and angst. It's, it's my motor. You're uh, not only a gentleman and a scholar, oh, but uh, it, it, Drew, I I think he could give you a run for your money. Uh, yeah, I I really do. Clear. He's he's uh, clearly a hypochondriac. <laughs> Always complaining. <laughs> Anyone who knows anything about medicine is not a doctor; is a hypochondriac. Uh, or just interested. Okay. Ooh, I was. I almost nice. chose that profession. So. Oh, you did. Yeah. Well, you uh, had uh, the only thing that stood in the way was him passing the ninth grade. Other than that, he was uh, well on his way to his doctoral degree. Do you, did you then go back in in uh, pursue your education later on in life? I attended college for two years. Then I went to acting school in Chicago. And then after I came out here, I sat in on the genetics classes at UCLA just because I was tired of just comedians going, Hey, is this funny? You know, like shoes. They call them shoes, but they stay. I, I never met uh, Dennis Wolfsburg, but 
he, it sort of reminds me, uh, he seemed like a guy, he was on the show, right, yeah, before he passed away? Yeah. Seemed like a guy who was uh, pretty intelligent. Oh, yeah. He was very intelligent, and he had a propensity to, to, uh, to stick out his tongue. And, uh, and occasional times. I liked that. He was a very, very sweet man. And a very funny uh, stand-up, by the way. And a teacher. Oh, yeah. it was? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, all right, so we, we digress here. The name of the show is Loveline. We'll uh, be back with uh, more Charles Fleischer and uh, possibly the ghosts of Dennis Wolfberg after this. Hey, this is Iggy Pop, and you're listening to Loveline with Dr. Drew and Adam Carolla. Yes, you is. Dr. Drew is not currently here. Uh, Charles Fleischer is not really in the position to be involved with the show, considering he's uh, standing up and sipping out of his uh, bottled water. But, yes, he's back. I blinked my eyes, and he was sitting down with the cans on. Hold on one moment. Drew! Are we on the air? Yeah. Really? Yes. I love that. Yeah. That's Dr. A... Drew's not here, but I will, in his absence, try and fill in. Okay. Well, I have a question. Okay. Let's just suppose I was uh, perusing the net. Yes, sir. The internet. And uh, the internet. And uh, I wanted to go on to a, uh, a website that wasn't mm, the standard fare, that had art, uh, music, uh, math equations, um, uh, and, and the like. Uh, is, is there any suggestions? I would say monkeydog.com. It also has an oracle which will predict your future, but I've just heard from uh, the guys at Burning Cow that we've gotten over 25,000 hits tonight, so if you're at home, please wait. Don't get on to monkeydog.com now. Please don't log on to monkeydog.com now. Please don't. What shouldn't they log on to? monkeydog.com. Don't do it now. Please right. wait. Yeah, because there are others who are... The servers are going nuts. There are others who are more deserving than you that would like to get on it and enjoy it before you. I would say yes. Okay. And it's a downloading frenzy. Nobody knows child psychology like Charles Fleischer. Co the good doctor. Corey. Yes. You're 30. What's going on? Um, nothing. I just had a couple of questions. Um, number one, how come you don't have any uh, porn stars on as guests? Charles has done porn. How do you know what I have and haven't yeah. done, young man? You don't know his uh, credentials. <laughs> well, I, I kind of consider myself a porn uh, connoisseur, and I've yet to see him in any. Okay, give me some actresses you like. Uh, actresses? Yeah, name. Well, from the old school, I like Nina Hartley. Sure. She's still uh, around. Yeah, yeah, she's but she's kind of wore I mean, out. Isn't now. she in Boogie Nights? Yeah, yeah, she is in Boogie Nights. Is she really? I haven't seen it yet. Hold on. Nina hit on producer Ann. Yeah, she did. <laughs> Best piece of ass you've had, huh? She followed me around, and she said she wanted some of that. Really? <laughs> she looked at me. You weren't uh, holding a, a corn dog or something? <laughs> a piece of cookie. <laughs> oh, boy. And well, I don't so see how any... I was. Uh, I know that you're a, a porn connoisseur yourself, and I was wondering who your favorite star is, and um, mm -hmm. some suggestions for some movies. Because in, in in Salt Lake, it's kind of hard to come across porn without traveling to uh, Wyoming or Nevada. Right. So it's like when I make the trip, mm -hmm. I try to collect as much as I possibly can. Because you man, see, out here, I guess that's like um, uh, buying fireworks. Yeah. Well, I lived know. in <laughs> someone going to TJ to uh, go on a run. Uh, what can I put you down for, Charles? A couple bottle rockets, uh, yeah, uh, some flowers, and maybe. Pickup line. The series is very nice. The, uh, it depends what you go for. You know whether you want. Well, I, I, I like a lot of uh, like double penetration, anal oh, sex. Geez. I really dig. I like a uh, more mm -hmm. right, butts. Please, well, please. My hero. Well, there's the Ass Master series I could recommend. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, of course, I'm I'm an old, you know, the um I like uh, the Christy Canyons. Yeah. And she's good. she's she's good too. Yeah. She has um, pendulous memories. The uh, new ones I like, I like Minka. Minka? Yeah, the big Asian woman. Uh, I'm not too much into Asians though. Well, that's your problem. Well, I'm Asian though, that's why. <laughs> oh, you are. Yeah. Nothing worse than a bigot porno. Freak. You know, the last time I was at the porn store, I was trying to get to the uh, Asian, uh, you know, the Asian delight section, and there was an Asian guy standing in there, and I felt bad, <laughs> like I was exploiting him or something, and so I waited for him to clear out of there, and uh, then moved in for the kill. Also, I want to know what mahalo means. Mahalo means thank you in Hawaiian. In Hawaiian? Yes. It's, okay, because I thought it might be Jewish or Yiddish or Hebrew or Yiddish or something. That's mahalo. That's mahalo. And that's hey, what I happens when there's nothing in the bank. It's mahalo. <laughs> and there's also challah, which is a nice thing. Right. And then there's a uh, Valhalla. Valhalla okay, well... and Chewbacca. <laughs> All right, Corey. Thanks for your time. All righty. Oh, boy. Asian guy is really into porn. You know his parents are pissed. Corey, boy. <laughs>
I wonder what he'll be doing later. What? How many Asian guys named Corey are there, by the way? <laughs> Corey Chin. He must have. <laughs> Corey Yang, Corey Mondoku, <laughs> Corey MSG, Corey Ander. Gene. Yeah. You're 26. Yeah. What's going on? I just wanted to comment on what Emma said about, like, her boyfriend totally, like, wrestling her and everything, even though he's already known what she's been through. Mm-hmm. Totally, like, more than, ugh, like, nastily happened to me. This guy had completely known that I was raped earlier. And I was dating him for, like, six months, and we, we didn't sleep together or anything. And as soon as I got too drunk... He totally took advantage of me. It was like a date rape situation. Right. It's like guys are like pigs. Mm-hmm. Are you are you are you turning to women now? No. 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 Okay. Well, I mean, are you going to be able to find a guy who's not a pig? I don't know. That's the thing. You know what I mean? Like, it's just like I expect them to be jerks. All right, but if if, if guys if guys are pigs, then uh, women are pig farmers. No. <laughs> well, listen. Here's what I'm saying. Uh, I, we were talking about when Drew, Drew and I did this lecture uh, last week and some girls stood up and said, uh, are there any guys out there who are decent, who uh, don't just want sex, there who, who will call you back after the first date, blah, so on and so on and so forth. And I said, uh, yes, but you girls aren't interested in them. Because they're too nice. Okay. <laughs> see, Nutty? You see what it is? Of course. <laughs> there are many men who... She's who, not diabolical. <laughs> <laughs> this no. is evil laugh. Uh, are you, you're like a mad scientist. No, I don't mean it like that. I mean, oh. What happened? Why? Off. What happened with the rape? All right. Well, I was living in New York City. I was there for like six months, and my friend wanted to hook up with this guy. Well, so don't they rape you right at the airport when you enter New York? No, in my oh, own apartment. A, all right, that was an old policy. So uh, this was a, da a date rape. No, this was the first one. Yeah. What happened? Um, the guy came home to, like, hook up with my friends, so I gave them, like, the bedroom, and I, like, fell asleep on the couch, mm -hmm. and I had drank too much, so, like, I passed out. Well, apparently she didn't give him anything, so I woke up in the midst of him completely raping me. Uh, and there was another time after that? Yeah. Same thing. And I had told a guy that I was dating that had happened to me, and, um... We went out one night. We had a great time, blah, blah, blah. We were just totally mm. hanging out, having fun. Drinking again? Yeah. You got drunk and passed out okay. and you raped. So Jean, no, you, but I wasn't passed out. But I you, have alcoholism. you have alcoholism in your family, right? Alcohol. Right? My grandfather. Okay. Not like my immediate family. That is your immediate family. Okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that would be your mother's father. <laughs> Okay. Uh, and so that so that gene you seem to have picked up upon, and so this is all around alcohol. And I would suspect that, given that you were raised in a family where alcoholism is present, somebody may have done something to you earlier. Well, but they you know, like my dad was like the best guy in the I'm world. Not saying it's your dad. I wonder if somebody else, uncle or grandpa or somebody, no, while they were like drinking. Every like I have no problem with anybody in my family. Everybody was like we were like the Brady bunch. Mm. Three. Honestly, yeah. three boys, three girls, you're fabulous. Uh, you're serious. You sprinkler totally keys serious. in your abdominal area. Right, but then what? Why are we all picking up on that? We're all getting a vibe here, Gene. You're all getting a vibe, but I'm telling you, I do not recall or even imagine any possible thing of that sort. That's what I'm trying mm, to say. Okay. When, how old were you when you first started having sex? I wasn't, I was almost 18. Okay. All right. Were you yeah. drunk at the time? I'm sorry? No, I wasn't. Okay. Uh, Jean? Yeah? Well, you've, you've learned your lesson. Uh, you, you had something bad happen to you. Uh, I don't want right. you know, to pin the whole thing on you. But see if you can stay away from a, a guy who's going to do this to and, you. And that, that's a, that's right. I know. And don't, uh, listen, the guy's a pig, but there they're, they're, they're are many of them out there. Everybody blames it on something that's in the family. And there was well, it could be. In the it, well, could the, be your the, alcohol. The, look, there is a through line here. There was some alcoholism in your family, and each incident involved alcohol. So that is a bit of a through line, Gene. You must admit that. That, and you admitted that you're not interested in guys that aren't dangerous. No, I did not. You said the nice right, guys right. were boring. My friend that was really preppy and had a nine to five job was really boring. Okay, you're right. Right, uh, the okay. non rapist. <laughs> Well, yeah. I didn't mean to date a. I didn't know. Right. That he was okay. In jail until listen. After listen. I, uh, listen. We don't. I don't want to put the uh, defendant 
uh, in the in the uh, on uh, on, trial. On, on trial here. Right. We apologize, Gene. But uh, here's all we're saying. Um, whatever happens to you in your life, this is uh, this is really one of the few messages my uh, father, God rest his soul, taught me. He uh, he's still alive. We just don't talk that much. So. <laughs> Uh, he said to me, Good sign. go ahead and take responsibility for whatever it is that goes on in your life. And I would, uh, I would you know, go uh, halfway across the city to some store at uh, noon on a Tuesday and it would be closed. And I'd come back bitching and cursing because uh, there was like, some sort of tragedy and they closed the store. And my dad would say, it's your fault for not calling and seeing if they were open first. And I'd say, but dad, how the hell am I supposed to know to call? And he'd say, listen, if you had called... That would have been it. And, I, you know, I go ahead and take everything. responsibility. But I wanted Emma to know that it's totally not her fault. Like, no, we didn't. Oh, yes. No, no, listen. She feels like it is. No, no, no. We, we, I think and we that's got. that's my concern. No, no, Jean, I think we got away from that. We found out what had happened. Well, to like, her, she, so. she had uh, Jason yeah, in, in her basement, for Christ's sake. I mean, <laughs> you, you understand, uh, Jean? <laughs> All right, Jean, listen. Moratorium on, um, on men for six months. And for oh, I haven't even too. in a long time. All right. And for our show, moratorium on denial. Oh, boy. I don't have denial tonight to last me. Wow. An eternity. A lot of angry women uh, phoning in uh, this evening. I may not masturbate when I get home. I do. I think, I think I'll do it in the car. Do you uh, use a huh? lubricant when no. you fulfill yourself? No. You go dry? Uh, occasionally I'll get a little sweat out of the Could pit. Break, but, uh, yeah. Okay. All right. Now that I've grossed Dan out sufficiently, we'll go to break. All right, give me a little French fried potato, show. All right, then. I like them potatoes. Mm, I like mustard, too. Good Lord said two men all not sleep together. Mm, of course, he never saw Johnny Depp. <laughs> Boy, it's yours, party. Mm. Charles Fleischer, uh, thank you very much for coming in. MonkeyDog.com is the name of his web page. Again, do not check that out, kids. The Universe According to Virgil Reality is the uh, CD-ROM, which uh, is uh, Charles's um, um, uh, creation, and it has uh, interesting math equations and whatnot on it. Very interesting, very colorful, so uh, check that out as well. Charles, thank you very much. It was truly a pleasure to aid you gentlemen in helping the dysfunctional members of our society. Thank you. And uh, Dr. Drew? Yes, sir. It's enough out of you. Thank you. So, until next time, this is Adam Carolla for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed herein are certainly opinions. That's for sure. If you'd like a written transcript of today's program, you probably should have written it down yourself. And if you did, we'd like a copy. Loveline producer Ann Wilkin.